development of nuclear weapons during World War II changed warfare forever. In the early days, they were massive and heavy, and barely able to be carried and dropped by an airplane. Over the next decade, that changed rapidly. By the early 1960s, they even became small enough to be carried by hand. This shrinking in size and weight, plus development in missile technology, resulted in endless possibilities of ways to deliver nuclear bombs to a target. And in the early days of the Cold War, nothing was off limits. Both sides came up with some pretty crazy methods of doing this. But first, the sponsor. Conflict of Nations is a free online strategy game that gathers millions of players worldwide. You fight up to 64 other players in real time in games that can take weeks to complete. The game is set in the early 21st century and features modern weapons and technology. Your objective is to take over the world. Define your strategy, build powerful armies by combining dozens of different unit types such as infantry, tanks, planes, and fight for world domination in a challenging PvP environment. I've been playing recently as Bulgaria and I love the strategy element. Join a huge community of millions of players in-game and on Discord and use your diplomatic skills to forge alliances with other players. The game is fully cross-platform, meaning you can play with the same account on both PC and mobile. I have set up a special game of Conflict of Nations for first-time viewers that click in the link in the description. Go to the website or app, type in my name, Cover Cabal, no space or capitals, into the search bar, and then enter the same for the password. The slots are limited, so don't lose time. And Covert Cabal viewers are getting a special gift Click on the link below and get 13,000 gold and a one month premium subscription for free. The offer is available only for 30 days. So click on the link in the description, choose your country and fight your way to victory in epic real time battles. During the early cold war, everyone was looking for ways to get an edge over their enemy. This means any plan, no matter how crazy was considered. My favorite by far was SLAM. The supersonic low altitude missile, SLAM for short, was basically a massive cruise missile, armed with nuclear warheads, and powered by a nuclear engine, which gave it virtually unlimited range. If this sounds familiar, it's because Russia recently designed their own version, the Burivishnik. However, SLAM was planned to carry multiple nuclear bombs, more than a dozen. The missile would fly, as the name implies, at low altitude to avoid detection by radar, and at supersonic speeds, making it very difficult to shoot down, especially in the 1960s. As it reached its target, it would eject a bomb, then continue flying to another target, where it did the same. It kept doing this until it ran out of bombs. While it was supersonic, it could be flying around for hours, even days, before reaching all its targets. The idea actually got pretty far. The actual missile, warheads, and guidance systems were well within the technological capabilities of the time. The main issue was developing a small enough nuclear engine to fit on it. Project Pluto was the name of the program to do this. They were mostly successful, even tested the engine, getting it to run for several minutes. The only limiting factor was the testing facility ran out of compressed air to simulate the flight conditions. However, not long after, it was cancelled. This was right around the time when ICBMs really began becoming more reliable and cost effective, and offered much faster speeds, which made SLAM unnecessary. One problem was what to do if the missile failed in flight, or if they lost control of it. Since it's nuclear powered, it could have continued on circling the entire Earth eventually crashing somewhere and causing a major incident. There was also concerns about radiation created by the missile, either while in flight, during testing, or even on the ground. So the project ended. Again, only to seemingly be reborn again in Russia recently. And interestingly enough, Russia has reportedly been having radiation issues in its development when an accident killed five of their scientists. Small nuclear weapons were probably the most dangerous and crazy. Nuclear artillery shells were developed and deployed, things like Davy Crockett, which was pretty much just a large grenade launcher, even nuclear landmines. The danger here is that these things were getting so small to the point that they were pretty much just large bombs, and the concern is that some would treat them that way as well, lowering the threshold for the use of nuclear weapons in combat. The fear was that this could quickly escalate into a full-blown nuclear war. Unfortunately, the details of Soviet nuclear weapons is not as clear due to them, and now Russia, not being as open about its plans. But defectors such as Vasily Mitrokin, Stanislav Lunev, Viktor Suvorov, and others have mentioned sabotage plans the Soviet Union carried out. This included large arms caches, including small nuclear bombs, hidden inside the US and Western Europe, which would be used by spies in the event of a war. And some of these caches have been found with the information they provided, and some claim that there are still many more that have not yet been found. The US did a somewhat similar thing with so-called green light teams, these special forces units would sneak into enemy territory with miniature nuclear bombs, place them, start a timer, and try to escape before detonating. 
These small nuclear bombs, as expected, have a much smaller blast radius. In the case of the W-54 used on Davy Crockett, the smallest and lightest ever built that we know of, it would have only had a blast radius around 100 meters, or a couple city blocks in each direction. One more worth mentioning specifically was the UK's Blue Peacock. These were landmines which would be buried and hidden in northern Germany and be detonated when Soviet or Warsaw Pact countries invaded. The funny part is that they worried about the extreme cold of the region. So their solution to keep them from freezing and failing was to have live chickens inside of it, using their body heat to keep it warm. And perhaps the craziest idea award would go to Perimeter, better known as Dead Hand. It was, and likely still is, a semi-autonomous computer network which would give the orders to launch a nuclear strike if certain parameters were met. I made a video on this a while ago, if you're interested, but the idea was born out of the fear that if the Soviet leadership was all taken out in a quick strike, there would be no one left to give the command to retaliate. So they had a series of parameters which, if met, would give the command to launch, or by some accounts, launch the missiles automatically. Things like pressure readings, seismometers, radiation detectors, thermal sensors, and checking to see if communication lines still worked would, in theory, tell the computer whether or not a nuclear war had began and that it needed to retaliate without waiting for approval from leadership. The concern here is pretty obvious. Depending on its true level of automation and the degree humans had control over it, the fear of a false alarm or a computer error starting World War III is terrifying. Furthermore, with some crazy ideas about how to station nuclear weapons, each side went to extreme measures to make sure their nuclear arsenals could survive and retaliate in the event of a war. This was key for mutually assured destruction to work. So missile silos were spread out to avoid being all destroyed together, they were placed on submarines which could operate anywhere in the open ocean, and some were mobile, making them more difficult to target. But there were some pretty crazy ideas to make sure they'd survive. Things like attaching ICBMs to blimps, putting them on hovercraft and roaming the desert, driving them around on highways with civilian traffic passing by, burying them in sand to be able to withstand a hit, then pumping water into it to allow it to launch, and even tethering them to the bottom of the ocean. This file here is a real fun read. I'll have a link to it in the description if you're interested. But they mark the pros and cons of each, many of them being serious violations of arms control treaties or having horrible environmental impacts. But it goes to show that nothing was off the table in terms of ideas. But fortunately, the world mostly settled on the previous mentioned weapons as being enough to ensure deterrence. Spreading out missile silos, mobile launchers, submarines, and bombers. And those have really been it since the ending of the Cold War. That is, until recently. Russia, in fear of US missile defense systems, began to think outside the box. And I think you can consider Status 6 being among the crazy ideas. A nuclear-powered, nuclear-armed torpedo that could swim for days, weeks, and finally detonate causing a tsunami? It's pretty radical, but if they figure out all the technical problems, it would work pretty well at avoiding any current known or planned defense systems. And now with China growing into a superpower, and continued work on missile defense systems, we could again see some new crazy nuclear weapon ideas start to appear in the near future. Just let's all hope it ends the same way as before, with none of them ever being used. And again, don't forget to go check out Conflict of Nations. And again, if you use my link in the description, you'll get that 13,000 gold and a one month premium subscription. Again, it's only valid for 30 days, so go check it out.